Welcome to the DPS webcast on Query presented by Diane Carlisle. The agenda will cover four things. The run query command, which is a way to create a query on the fly. Joining files and, and talking about the common fields used to join. And then line wrapping, which is a way to squeeze more data onto a report. And then lastly, we'll talk about Excel and how to create a database file to pull into Excel. So we'll start with the run query. The command at the command line will be R-U-N-Q-R-Y space asterisk N space, and then the file name that you're planning to query, space R-C-D S-L-T parenthesis asterisk yes parenthesis, which means record select. So then you'll press enter and you'll get a select record screen. So in this example, we're trying to find items um, that we want to purge who've not had activity in the where warehouse Indy since 2000. So after you have your select records entered, you press enter and it will bring up the results. Then once you back out, of the query, it's gone and nothing is saved. Now let's talk about joins. Joins is a big one because it's the, probably the hardest part to understand with the query. Some of the reasons why you would join queries together would be because the fields that are needed for the query are, are in different files. Also, if you want to include the customer name, vendor name, item description, or any other information from the master files, you would need to do a join. Um, also, if the query needs to be formatted in a more streamlined manner. And then lastly, if you want to run calculations first. Some of the rules for sequencing the files are the query joins files in the order that they're listed on the specify file selection screen, not in the order that the join tests are entered. The first file is considered the primary file. The rest of the files are considered secondary. However, this does not pertain to join type 1, which is matched records, and we'll cover that in a moment. Third, the order in which you specify secondary files on the specify file selections display is important if all of the following are true. The join is a type 2, mean it's primary matched, or type 3, primary unmatched. The query joins three or more files. One or more of the secondary files do not have a join test connecting them to the primary file. And then fourth, if all three apply to your query, then you must follow the secondary file sequence rule to ensure that you will get only the information you want. And that rule states, use join tests to connect each secondary file to a file listed above it on the specify file selection screen. So for example, let's say that we want to join the customer master with the sales file and then the item file. We're using the customer master and the item master because they contain the descriptions or name of the, the piece of information we're looking for such as customer name and item description. And then I typically sandwich it in the, the sales analysis in between because this way we can say the customer number can be joined to the customer number in the sales file and then from the sales file, we can say that the item number is joined to the item master file. I do want to caution you that if you join files incorrectly, it could jeopardize your system. And remember, the first rule will jo join records to the second file. Excuse me, the first file will join records to the second file. The first or second file will join to the third file. And if there's no common field between the first and second file, then all the records in the first file will join to all the records in the second file. So if you have 1,000 customers and you've got 5,000 records in the sales file, it's going to take the first customer and join it to all 5,000 records in the sales file. 
then it's going to take the second customer and join it to all 5,000 records. So you can see that over th that eventually that file join will be huge and incorrect. So it's important to have the joins done correctly. Now the join types, there's three. The first one is matched record, and I would say that's probably the most common one that I use. And what that says is that there has to be something common between all of the files. And with a type 1 join, there's no primary or secondary. They're all treated the same. And because you have to have something common with all, all of the files joined. Now the second type is matched records with primary files. So basically what that will do is take every record in the primary file and match it to all uh, records from the secondary file where they exist. And then every record in the primary file is selected regardless if it has a match or not to the secondary file. The primary file is the first one listed. So an example of that would be if you're joining the customer with the sales file, you're going to get all customers regardless if they have sales or not. And then the third join type is the unmatched record with the primary file. It selects only the primary records that do not have matching secondary records. Use this type of join if you want to see which records in the primary file do not have matching records in any secondary file. So in this case, again, if you're joining the customer master to the sales file and you list the customer master first, then it's going to find any customers that do not have any records in the sales file. So let's take a look at these joins. Before we do that, let's talk about how to join the files. Just a few little rules. A field name must be preceded by a one to three character file ID only if that field name is used more than in one file in the query. So typically I'm talking about that T01, T02, etc. And I rarely change those. I just let those default. And because of the way DPS structures most of their files, they're unique and so you don't need to use the three digit um, character ID although oftentimes I do just because it helps visually help me to know that okay these fields are coming from my first file and then these fields are coming from my second file. Next fields in each join test must come from different files and then files must have at least one field in common between them in order to be joined. Note that this does not mean field names have to be the same, only that the data contained in those fields must be equivalent. In most of the cases, we are pretty consistent with the field names, at least the base part. So for example, warehouse, we typically spell it as WHSI in all the files. However, one exception to that is in the item price file. Most of our other files, we spell um, the item as ITEM, but in the pricing file, it's STK pound. They still represent the same field, the same meaning. It's just that they have a, a different field name. OK, you can also specify up to 100 join tests. I have to say I've not quite gotten to that extreme. The EQ test is used most of the time to join any of your selected files. I think there's only been one time in my career where I've used something other than an EQ. So pretty much just plan on using the EQ. Data in the fields join must be the same type. In other words, they both have to be alphabetic or both numeric. And then more than one test can be used for a given pair of files. So if I were joining, say, the order header with the order detail, I would typically use the company number and the order number. OK, so we, here we want to join the customer master to the sales file, the sales analysis file, and then the item master. So I use the T01 ID and two and three. Just because, like I said, it's a visual, it helps me know that, okay, from the first file, I'm using the customer numbers, part one and two, 
and then in the second file I'm using the sales analysis company number and item number and then I'm joining it to the third file which is the company and the item number. Okay, let's look at some join examples in action. Okay, so in our, this example we're joining the customer master with the sales analysis file. And the common fields are the customer part one and part two. So in our database, very small database, we've got a, a total of 10 or excuse me, nine customers. Then in the sales analysis file, we have a total of four records and they all happen to be for customer 100. So that's the only customer that has sales. So when we join a, t a one with a join type one, the only customers common, the only records common are gonna be the sales for customer 100. And that's all we'll get are the four records. However, if we do a join type two, we're saying give us all of the records in the, the customer file, all nine records, plus any additional records that pertain from the sales file. So here we have all nine customers and you notice that customer 100 has the four records. And then the join type three says give me everybody in the first file who has no matching record in the second file. And in this case, this would be all of the customers with zero sales, and that's everybody except customer 100. Another question I'm asked frequently is, what, how do we know which files, or excuse me, which fields to join? And so I would say these are probably the most common ones that, that I use anyways. Coming from the master file, it would be the item master, the customer number, the vendor number, the GL account number. And then also if you're dealing with transaction files, then it would be things like the order number, the invoice number, purchase order number, an AP, voucher number, or batch number, check number, and then GL would be the journal entry number. And then there's a few extra fields that um, I wouldn't consider master or transaction number fields, and that would be the company number, warehouse number, line number, serial or lot number. On occasion, there may be a few uh, additional ones, but I would say these are probably the primary fields that you're going to use when joining. Okay, now let's talk about line wrapping. I like line wrapping because invariably there's more data that I want to squeeze on the report than what's available if I'm just using a landscape report that's 132 characters wide. So here's an example of a query where line wrapping was used and then basically I put the customer's name and address in a, an address block. So they're stacked on top of one another. Now there's several pieces in the query that you've got to set in order for this line wrapping to work. One is the select and sequence fields. You've got to number the fields in the order going across the page, like you're reading a book, and then going to the second line and continuing numbering the fields, and then going down to the third line and continuing to number the fields. So if you remember, my city, state, and zip were towards the bottom, and that's where I've got them listed towards the bottom. The next screen that you'll need to change is the select output type and output form. There's a line wrapping section, so make sure you set that to yes. And then the line wrapping width, if you want landscape, set it to 132. If you want portrait, then it would be 85. And then the last piece is the specify report column formatting. Notice that for the customer name, field, which is the second one listed on the screen, I've, I've got in the column heading not only the customer name, but I also added the address and then the city, state, and zip. So basically I've squeezed the column heading for, for several different fields all into one 
field name. Then, because I've, I've chosen to put the address and the city, state, and zip as part of the column heading for the customer name, then I don't need to have them repeat where the actual field names for the address, city, state, and zip are. So there's a special function called asterisk none, and it has to be all capital letters, that will basically suppress the headings where they normally would have fallen for the address, city, state, and zip. And then the third piece is the column spacing and the length. I use those to push the columns um, over to position them where they need to be so that those particular fields will stack up neatly in a, in a column. And you'll just have to play around with the numbers, you know, guessing at numbers and then pressing at five to look at what your result looks like and you'll see that, oh, it's still out of line so I need to add another five characters or oops now I went too far now I need to cut back to an additional four characters instead so you just have to play with the numbers and you can use both the column spacing and the length to, to, to accomplish that okay now let's talk about Excel database files may be created to export data into Excel but at other reasons for using database files to summarize files that contain multiple records for use in other queries, to narrow the amount of data in large files, especially if the data will be joined to other files, and when it's the only way to get the results needed. So what we have to do to create a database file is go to the select output type and output form the output type needs to be set to a 3 for database file. The form of output will need to be either a 1 or a 2 depending on what you're trying to accomplish. And then also because we've specified database file we'll get a different type of screen in the defined database file output and in this case we need to name the file. Typically, I give the file name the same name that I gave the query name. They're two separate entities. One is the query name, and on this screen, it's the file that is going to result from running the query. I just keep the names the same because it's just easier to know that, oh, this file was created from this query. And then, of course, you have to specify what library you want to store this new file that you're creating. And then the other important piece is the data in file. I usually set to a 2. If you leave it as a 1, it won't refresh your data when you run it from time to time, whereas a 2 will always refresh with the most current data. And then oftentimes I'll give a text description as well 